the heck are you doing? I'm playing my Ninja Turtle mini arcade game way back in our heyday. Why? Why not? God damn it, I lost it. Go Freak Media. Welcome back to Go Freak Media. I'm John John the Phenomenon. Why to Chris again? Yeah, we got something in store for you. Uh, we're going to do some comic book review, movie review, or trailer review for DVD, and a sneak peek at something. Something, something. I got a little bit of toy review, too. So we're going to start this off with the trailer for the new DVD. You ready? Yeah, so what we're going to be watching here is... Justice Society World War II. Um, basically, this is like, you know, way before Justice League of America, um, Wonder Woman, Our Man, The Flash, the original Flash, the one with the shiny helmet, and um, Hawkman. So this is pretty cool um, to see. I can't wait to see how this looks. All right, you ready? Let's do it. They've taken control of most of Europe and Russia. Merciful heaven, an invasion. That's not all, Mr. President. I take it that's where your big idea comes in. Let me introduce you to the team. We said we would end this war. Too many people have died. We can stop this. We need to utilize every meta-human we can. Who have you got there, Wonder Woman? I'm from the future. It's not impossible. Are you ready to end this war? I thought you'd never ask. Then, welcome to the team. If this goes haywire, blame the new guy. It turns out the Nazis are launching a surprise attack. Then we stop them. Mother of God. Ah, kid, you ain't seen nothing yet. for it until Barry Allen showed up. Right? <laughs> but, I mean, come on, Barry. Didn't you learn your lesson in Flashpoint? Let me ask you something. It sounded like Gal Gadot, but... Gal Gadot. Get it Gal right. I say Gadot. You say Gadot? Gal Gadot also says Gal Gadot. Oh, does she? Yes. Okay. How about Boba Fett? Boba. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so Yeah, I mean you can you can kind of see like they're going for that like, you know, Amazonian Greek accent. Um just but like it's not the her. movies and stuff like that. It's but that wasn't Gal Gadot, John John. Uh yeah. I thought it yeah. was like, yeah, no, I'm all for it with this um, Justice Society. Um, I just, I don't know why Barry Allen's here. Um, I kind of wish it would just stick with the Justice Society, but I guess Barry Allen just adds more to the drama. Was this after Flashpoint or Dark Avenge, Dark, Dark Justice Society? No, Dark Justice or... Dark Sides War? Yes. No. Yes. Where uh Justice League Dark. There you go. 
were yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of darkness in dc well no the la are they going in continuity like from what i'm looking at yes so probably all of this stuff is happened right after all those ones that you talked about okay yeah i just can't remember the last one I i remember uh they all got robotic on apocalypse Mm-hmm. Remember where they changed there, and then yep. he went back to the past. It was more about Constantine, yeah. So yeah. that was that was the last one I saw. But then after that one came out, um, Deathstroke, Son of the Dragon. Mm-hmm. That one came out recently, and now this one. Yeah, yeah, and then um that um Batman movie that um came out last week too as well um. I forgot what it was called. It, it's it's in this like during the seventies or something like that. With um, it's all kung fu type style. Oh yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which we'll probably review in the next episode. Probably like check it out and review it. But For yeah, sure. it's all continuity, um, following in order from what we've been watching. But like I said, Barry Allen always messing things up, man. You thought you would learn your lesson. Apparently not. Um, let's show them the surprise from Justice League. The Zack Snyder cut? The Zack Snyder cut. Check this out. Oh. So, what are we looking at is uh, Zack Snyder posted this picture up. That he put on social media. Um, this is the um, shot that he's redoing. Um, he added the Jared Leto to it. So the blurred background is Jared Leto uh, reprising his role as the Joker. But as you can see, um, that, that don't look like Jared Leto from the Suicide Squad no. on there. No tattoos, no blinged out teeth. <laughs> haircut on point. Um Honestly, it, it looks. I don't know. I mean, I like how the card looks like the cartoon card from uh, the animated series. Every time Joker had a card, it looked like that card. I'm just kind of worried from what I'm looking at. I was like, guys, don't please mimic Heath Ledger. Mm. Yeah, Joker kind of looks like the cuts in the cheek, maybe. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. you know what? You know, Jared Leto, he's a method actor. He'll probably put his own spin to it. So, um, like I said, we'll see. Um, I'm ready for this Zack Snyder cut. I got my couch all comfy and ready and make sure the bathroom is close by for this four-hour movie. <laughs> four-hour movie. Four-hour movie. Can't wait. Yeah, we can't we can't live review that here on on our channel. I know that sucks. Oh well. So, uh, I want to go to a little bit of toy review before we go to the comic books. So Funko Sodas. This one is Jean Lafoot. There is only 7,500, so it's worth getting. This is the soda itself. The soda can. This is the regular one that it comes out in. Regular colors, right? Not the chase. The aha. I got the chase too. Sick. Gene LaFoot is from Captain Crunch cereal. Yep. Yep. Do you remember this guy in any of the cereal commercials? Yeah, he was he was the Captain Crunch's arch nemesis. Was were the Soggies like his henchmen or something? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, barely comes back to me. Yeah, I hated that guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but there's seven thousand five hundred. Um, it's short on um release.
movies limited. So I had to have it. Seven thousand five hundred. Go get it if you can. Well, of course you needed it. <laughs> it's all your fault, though, man. Not the sodas, just funk. I was about to say, you want to go through that topic? <laughs> Speaking of Funko Pops, here's Leatherneck. Leatherneck. Yo, Joe. Leatherneck. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. I'll probably open them later. Side view. Number nine. Shipwreck. Well, Dr. Mindbender doesn't look like that on the back. Um, Zartan either. Uh, so it's showing the first of this four wave. But yeah, this is Leatherneck. I'm holding really back not to collect those because you know how much of a G.I. Joe fan I am. But. Yep. I got some of your collection in my background somewhere. Hey, what's the what's the next thing you want to show? Uh, that's it. <laughs> let's let's, let, let's, let's move on. Yeah, let's move. Hey, that's a pretty cool uh cup there. Yep, this is Voodoo Donuts from Portland, Oregon. Nice. And as you can see, there's a hole. <laughs> I see you. Because, like their logo, the magic is in the hole. Nice. Hey. That, that hole. is true. PG. Why bro. are you laughing? PG, bro. I don't understand. Oh. You know me. I get into that uh, other realm. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. And in the hole. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to comic books. <laughs> so, first one's up. Superman of Metropolis. Number two. As you can see right there, Superman and Supergirl are in a world of hurt with all those different brainiacs right there. Um... This is like, you know, basically just with um, the new Superman trying to, you know, say, hey, I am the Superman for here. A um, lot of craziness, um, pretty much like a trials of him to redeem him or, you know, show that he's worthy to be the new Superman. Um, this is issue, issue number two. There's only two issues in this uh, storyline. So this is it. <clears throat> There's also a um, backstory of uh, Jonathan Kent, the Guardian, and a Mr. Miracle storyline, too, as well. It's a continuation of the add-ons of this storyline, correct? Or uh, the, So here's the thing. <laughs> DC's smart. So, like, all of these backstories, they don't stick to, like, just like Superman and Metropolis. Like, you know, Mr. Miracle, the next storyline can go to, like, the dark detective or whatnot right right that's all i was uh, so alluding to yeah so like dc is like oh you like this backstory guess what you gotta collect them all <laughs> freaking dc smart but yeah very smart right that's good marketing very harley quinn and the birds of prey and this is a back label not this interested. is the this is the DC Black Label magazine size. Uh, this is book four. Um, this is the last issue of the storyline. Uh, basically, it's all about redemption for Harley Quinn. Um, she did something really bad on this. Um, if you haven't read this, um, you know it's only a four parter. I'm sure you can get all the issues at your local comic book store. But uh, Harley tried to do a good deed. And what she did was she took all of Joker's money and gave it back to all the people that they robbed. And now Joker ain't happy. And now all these people are after her and the birds of prey are trying to protect her. And um, in this issue over here, um, Harley's BFF is in trouble because Joker took her. 
And um, also another thing is Joker has a new girly girly friend. <laughs> oh, I know. What's your name? Punchline? No, Punchline is in the actual um, storylines that's going on. Black the Black Label series, like I said, it's just a short story. Doesn't have to deal with the continuity with DC or the future state. It's like their own universe, their own storyline. So with this one, I I can give it out right here because everyone looks at everything on the internet. But his girlfriend is named Harley Sin. What? I got to check it out anyway. Cool. You should. Check this out. Guess what's next? Hmm. The next Batman. (laughs) It is the next Batman. So, this is number three. And then as you can see, there's some backstory lines of the Outsiders and the Arkham Knights. Um, Really not much to talk about um it's just like basically the continue from the last two issues the only thing i can say with this storyline dta don't trust anyone right um this character is also trying to say that he's not batman but he is batman saw that little glimpse in there don't want to mm-hmm. ruin it for everybody, but yeah. Next up. A little redemption. Trying to figure out who himself. You know, like in our teenage years. For sure. That's like, do I like rap or do I like rock? I don't know. Both. Do I do I like Master P or Nirvana? It's hard Limp to tell. Biscuit or Nine Inch Nails or Limp Biscuit. Or what's that other? Lincoln Park. Yeah, I mean, do you want to keep on rolling, baby, or not? <laughs> I tried so hard. <laughs> anyway, I was gonna say I was gonna say something, but I'm like, oh wait, PG. Yeah, PG. <laughs> <laughs> so th- is this a uh, black label too? That is a black label, Hellblazer: Rise and Fall, Book Three. Uh, it is a series of three issues, so this is obviously the last one. Um, honestly, there's so much going on on this uh, story. Uh, the first book, first page I open, there's an angel falling from the sky and, like, dies. So Constantine's on it, and it was a billionaire that... Somebody attached wings on him and just dropped him out of the sky. And then obviously there was black magic and all that other stuff. But um, it's really hard to explain, especially that, you know, I really don't like spoilers. And I want all of you guys that are watching this channel to enjoy it. But if you are a big John Constantine fan, there is a lot of his um, arch nemesis and monsters that he's fought in the past that are on here that make an appearance um a certain guy named lucifer might Mm. show up on here too but i really like this um story the last issue right here um showed a big bang of big bang of john constantine how he's being a hero and doing the right thing but also at the same time like Showing that, no, he's no Superman or Batman. Like, he's just doing his job just to survive. Hmm. Worthy read, huh? Worthy read on there, especially if you followed um, a lot of the Hellblazer books in the past. You'll enjoy it. And Tom Taylor, he's like one of my favorite authors right now. Or writers, sorry. (laughs) Authors, writers, it's all the same. Right. Yep. Next up is uh, your boy, the Flash, or Flashes. Yeah. Flashes. Flashes. <laughs> you got a lot of flashes. It's flashy. It's very flashy on here, as you can see. Wally West's look like he's about to pound 
Grandpa Barry Allen over here, and he's like, oh, "Hi." <laughs> Do the face, do the face, do the face. Like, at the face over here, because, like, that's the same face I make every time, like, John John scares me. I'm like. (laughs) So, obviously, you can see, um, ever since Wally West came back, um, being stuck in um, the the speed force like he he's not been having a good past couple of years ever since he's returned I, I i kind of feel sorry for the guy too right but um yeah i mean he's done some pretty messed up things on here and it, it seems like it continued in the future and as you can see here grandpa barry over here decided to get all the rogues toys all together and try to stop wally west on here is Grandpa Barry going to succeed? Is mm. Wally West going to succeed? There's only one way to find out. Let's find out. Next up is uh, The Last Ronin. This is the third print. And it's a Ken And we're, st- and cover. we're still on issue number one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but still, this is uh, Kevin Eastman's uh, cover. So yes. he's with this. That is uh, Kevin Eastman. If you guys don't know who Kevin Eastman is, uh, number one, shame on you. Um, but this is the guy who originally drew and created um, one half of the creators of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on here. Um, you know, he's one of my idols. John John has heard me numerous times just idolizing this guy here. But um, if you guys aren't familiar with The Last Ronin, um him and peter laird this was a story that they wrote um back in the day um but it just got it never got published um kevin and um peter kind of had like a little fallout and um went their separate ways but um they it, it looks like everything's hashed out and they're good to go so um i'm happy that they brought this into publishing on here but Basically, just like with every other comic book, it's a future story on here. And basically, just like what the title says, it's the last Ronin. So um, I think we can spoil it. But yeah, there's only one Ninja Turtle alive in the future. For sure. The other three are deceased. Gone. Bye-bye. Well, in the comic book series... Is it the last Ninja Turtle? Because in the continuity of IDW, there is a female Ninja Turtle, and it's not Venus de Milo. It's Jenica. We don't talk about Venus Venus de Milo. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh... (laughs) Even though I got the, the toys for it, I was like, oh, this is special. Nope. So... Now we got to wait for the Jenica toy to come out. But yeah, exactly. He's, he's with that, but I am hoping to see Jenica in The Last Ronin. You never know. You never know. I mean, hopefully we can get to issue number two by the end of this year. Yeah. <laughs> but, you mean? I mean, like I, like I said, this is the third printing. Um, the, the last thing that I saw um, on IDW, they said that um, the... Um, Issue number two is finally going to come out either the end of um, this month or the beginning of next month. And then IEW is going to be releasing the last Ronin number one again, but it's a director's cut. So it's going to have like the script. It's probably going to have um, um, the uh, um, artwork like sketches and stuff like that of like how they made issue number one so just like me and john john over here we have the first printing of issue number one the second printing of issue number one and now we have the third printing of issue number one and the next month we're gonna have the director's cut (laughs) of issue number one die hard bro die hard (laughs) but yeah that's that's ruining Moving but yeah, on. that's my favorite cover with Eastman. Here's to Kevin Eastman. Kevin.
Kevin Eastman, the man. Love you, bu- love you, buddy. Yes, very much. Moving on to Marvel. This is the Legend of Shang Chi. Um, uh, to say that something about this one, and a villain of the X Men shows up in here. Uh, to Ooh. be more specific, one of Wolverine's enemies is in here. Um, I don't know if this is a prelude to the movie that's coming out. We'll see, but it's an interesting read. You, there, it is open ended, so it ends, but there's more to it. So, I think this is a four part series. Um, yeah, read it. It's pretty cool. I'm with it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a prelude, but it's just a um a story that Marvel Comics. Oh, they always do this every time they have a movie. They'll uh, do like a mini series, so people that are not familiar with the characters, they can pick it up and get familiarized with the characters before they come out. Right. Obviously, the I think they they're barely starting production on this movie right now. Right. Um, I know the actor stop. went on Twitter and said that he tried on his suit for the first time and it was kind of snuggy. Didn't he cry though too? Because he's like, I'm Shane Chi. <laughs> I read somewhere in that 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 happened. I would cry too if I was Shane Chi too. Yeah. Freaking amazing. This guy is dope. Um, yeah, but check out Shane Chi. This is the legend of Shane Chi. There is the regular series of Shane Chi too. So yeah, that's Shane Chi, legend of Shane Chi. Um, next up is uh, Hellions. Um, in this oh. cover, it is Mastermind holding Mister Sinister, holding Mastermind holding Mister Sinister. <laughs> Keep going. You got a couple uh, more. Oh, I could go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a little bit of on this, um, just in general about the X Men, uh, their their New Haven or back in long time ago, Magneto had Asteroid X, right? You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So back. Um, when Wolverine, uh, Storm, Colossus, and all them, when they first joined the team, they had to go rescue the other X-Men on the island of Kokoro. Mm-hmm. I think I said it right. Uh, I can't remember. But anyways, that island turns out to be a mutant of some sort, of Earth, or a person. They're, uh, it, it's kind of weird to say but it has turned into the new Asteroid X. All villains, all superhero mutants, all intermesh together. They, It's their haven. Um, this is the Hellions. They are kind of intertwined with Mr. Sinister. Uh, Havoc and, and Psylocke are kind of the team leads in this and in this episode number nine um it who's who's holding who that's all i i can say it you got to read this um but it's two bad guys and what's going on one saying one is missing the other is missing it's pretty cool the end of the the end of this book you get to see more than just those guys as the villains and it is open in too of course all was all the comic books are but yeah check this out hellions number nine um next stuff. up next up is strange academy number eight <clears throat> last episode dormammu doyle dormammu dormammu's son um it showed Doctor Strange holding him, right? He died, right? So, in this next one, he has to go see a psychologist of a sort to talk about his death. And guess who it is? 
Take a guess. Doctor Doctor Phil. <laughs> it's Dead Girl from the X Force back in back early in the 2000s. heyday. Yeah. <laughs> but it, wow, that's his psychologist. But it's kind of giving a little backstory in there. Um, I don't want to spoil too much, but uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are in there. So something, <laughs> something. They're everywhere. On. Yeah. But uh, I was like, what the heck? And What's going on here? So They're yeah. in Strange Academy. And they're going to be in Thor Love and War or Love and Rock or whatever that new movie's coming out. Why not? It's funny you say Thor. But yeah, check out Whoops. Strange Academy. <laughs> yep. That is it for comic book review for sure that is it well speaking of um mutants and all that stuff um did you see wandavision episode three and four i did and actually it is friday our time guess what's out well then, let's watch it and then give it the review for the next time. But the last Wandavision, we didn't do that one. Um, we finally figure out though who it's all about, and it's not Vision. It is Wanda. But uh, th- they're still having the commercials with Hydra. Mm-hmm. So, is it her in this scenario going on, con- being controlled, or is it Hydra? Is it her just trying to live this way because that's how she wants to live it? And Hydra's just, like, holding her hostage to make her think that way? I don't know. It can go into different scenarios. I mean, like you said, maybe Hydra is controlling her and using her powers for whatever reason. Um, The awesome part about it on the last episode was, you know, Agent Rambo, we found out it was, you know, Rambo's daughter who was a little girl from Captain Marvel. Now she's all grown up and then, you know, the on episode four, the first thing we see, she got blip back blip back right and how many years is it five years five years five years but Mm -hmm. what's crazy is she didn't age everybody else did and whoa right Mm -hmm. so her name is monica rambo Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so is they going to introduce her if you're a marvel fan you know who she is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even even in the Captain Marvel movie when she was a young girl, we knew who she was going to be. Right, right. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, just to see that, you know, her mom was the one that started S.W.O.R.D. Right. with everything that happened with Captain Marvel and then... Um, just with everything that's going on, it's really interesting to see. The thing that like freaked me out was when Wanda threw her out of that make believe city. Yeah. And then when Vision came in, she saw Vision and Vision looked like a freaking Vision zombie. Which like That was I'm, trippy. I'm freaked out about it because like I'm like, oh my god, is Wanda using Vision's dead robot body to live this? Right. Because you know the the um the gem the is pulled out of his head. Stone is gone. Yeah, yeah. Infinity stone. Yeah, yeah, so like is she like doing like a puppet of like a dead vision? Right. But it's weird because in in the storyline he has his own personality talking to the neighbors. So mm-hmm. Yeah. But remember, everyone's watching this outside of the Make Believe City as a sitcom show. Yeah. Yeah. But, so. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. I didn't we don't know, it but that way. it's interesting too because like with everything of all the movies that Marvel's coming out, it's kind of connecting with what's going on in WandaVision because obviously, you know, it, it's no spoiler, uh, Wanda Scarlet Witch is going to be in the next um, Doctor Strange movie. So she's going to be in it. However, we don't even know if she's going to be like teaming up with him or is she going to be the villain? Right. Also, and then, what about the brother. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bay We've Church been hearing up, things. Supposedly. Well, I didn't see him in at the end, but on the trailer of the release on YouTube for Disney Plus, it showed the X Men Petro, not the Avengers Petro. Mm-hmm. Quicksilver. Yeah. It shows, I, but I didn't see him in the trailer unless he was at the very, very end. Well, and like I said, it, saying that this WandaVision is going to connect with everything moving forward on what Marvel's doing. You know, we're talking about the next Spider Man movie where there's a rumor that all three Spider Mans from the three different movies are going to be there. So it would make sense that, oh, 20th Century Fox Quicksilver is in here. That, so, that's going to be dope if it happens. If it happens. Right. And then all of a sudden, you're just going to see Patrick Stewart come out of anywhere and say, Wanda, stop! <laughs> no again. Oh, which dad, though? Which Magneto? Oh. Is it Magneto? Mm. Well, I hope it's Magneto. I hope it is too. <laughs> but yeah, they be- they better not screw that up. Uh, Avengers didn't really say that though. It... They couldn't. Yeah, they couldn't even say mutants. Yeah, gifted. Remember, they were gifted. They were gifted because in the storyline of Age of Ultron, there was like some nuclear explosion or like a missile that hit their apartment complex or whatever. It didn't explode or something like that, but then that's when they started getting their powers. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully with this new whatever multi-universe that Marvel and even DC is doing that they'll fix things around. But <clears throat> it's the also the other thing that I was kind of hoping for when we were still trying to figure out with WandaVision on what was going on when they were doing like the whole 50s. 60s type era look i knew that they were talking about the fantastic four but um did you hear about it i had to look over and over again i didn't see it but remember the beehive guy yeah so his name tag said richards oh i didn't notice that easter egg Nice. Either Richards or Frank or um Reed, something like that. Reed Richards. Or Reed Franklin Richards? Richards. So because I knew I knew when I was hearing rumors about the Fantastic Four movie, they were gonna present it like it was still back in the day in the fifties and sixties, which would make sense for it to have like that type of genre. And have that feel that Stanley and Jack Kirby did with their comic books. So I don't know. I'm I'm talking out of my butt right now. <laughs> no, we got something to say about it. Um, I didn't even realize that the B guy was part of the Fantastic Four. I didn't even. Well, like I said, that's speculation. Like... I need to lo- I need to look at it again. Like some, I, I was reading it somewhere that. If you look at the name tag, it said like either Reed or Richards or something like that. So, yeah, check it out later. Well, that's it on my end. You got anything else? No, that's I'm good. I'm just going to read more of my comic books. Probably go look at other YouTube channels, especially Versus Pro Wrestling. 
Oh, yeah. Two as well. If you guys haven't heard that, check out their um, channel on YouTube or even on Facebook, too. Pretty cool matches. My favorite is the Michael Jackson wrestler. Santana Jackson? Yeah, yeah. That, that Moonwalk DDT. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I like Cody Jeffries. I like The Shade. Yeah. The Shade. Like, the Shade's like, my uh, man. The West Project. Um, man, Hollow Point. There's some, there's some good old wrestlers over there. Mm -hmm. It's just getting better, and it's gonna keep getting better. But versus pro wrestling is on the come up for sure. Versus pro. Yep. Gotta love it. Yep. Gotta love it. Gotta check it out. Yep. 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 I'm John John the Phenomenon. Why to Chris? Thanks for watching. Go free media TV. I'm gonna, gonna get back to my game. Have fun, bro. Thanks. Go freak media.